Good morning, everyone. Um, we are birding live with Frosky Optic. Uh, my name's Lizzie, and I'm at the Snettersham, uh, which is on the edge of the wash. Uh, today, we are going to be showcasing you some uh, birds from across Europe. Um, so for me, I'm on the uh, Norfolk coast in England, um, showing you the in spectacular wader roost that occurs uh, on the high tides. So we'll be looking at um, flocks of knot, uh, oyster catchers, um, some bartel godwits, uh, all coming in off the mudflats um, as the tide comes in. So just for context, uh, these are the pits at Snettersham. So the birds will be flying over the bank, um, hopefully in the next uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so, and they'll drop onto these islands uh, where they're going to roost. And then as the tide drops back out, they'll fly back off the pits and back onto the mudflats uh, where they'll carry on feeding uh, for the rest of the day until the tide comes back in again. So this is also an RSPB nature reserve um, and it's also one of the most important sites uh, in, well, in Europe and internationally. Uh, and it can have over 400,000 uh, birds uh, on a regular basis using it. So you can see a common terns just flying in now. So we've also got a little egret in the background. There's another common turn just dropping in. So, so you can see the oyster catches by the distinctive uh, carrot like bill. And um, so, some of these birds breed here and winter here. Ah, oh, hi, Rachel. Hi, Lizzie. <laughs> Sorry about that. We've uh, lost connection this morning but hopefully we're back on and you can see me I'm still on the edge of the wash now and hopefully you can see me behind the tide is rising it's picking up some speed and we've got some really good aggregations of oyster catches and knot and dunlin out there at the moment um, <laughs> obviously we are live streaming so literally anything can happen and we are birders uh, doing what we love trying to show you some cool birds we're not in a studio, we're not TV presenters. <laughs> um, so yeah, if the connection goes again, for everyone at home, please just bear with us. Also, if you hear any rude words from over-enthusiastic birders as well, we apologize in advance. So have you got some good aggregations over there, Lizzie? Yeah, so the knot, we've got a few, few hundred knot in this um, group here. Um, and there's a few more birds will be dropping in soon and um, we've also got some um, a little egret showing got some common turns that are flying around so I was about to chat about some of the common turns um, but you look like um, you should start to see stuff coming in soon hopefully yes we've had a few fly over our head actually since we've been uh, stood here um, and the we've probably got another I don't know, a good 10, 15 minutes before the tide reaches right the top of the, the mud flats before it starts hitting the marsh. And then hopefully we'll see I'm here yesterday and we've got the numbers hot off the press for those. Uh, but topping the list there was about 40,000 red knots, which is fantastic numbers and up over the last few years as well. And that's just on this section of the wash. The wash is vast. It's got four main rivers running into it um, and it's an internationally recognized 
um, wetland site. So incredibly important for birds um, here. I think what I'll try and do is get you on the scope and we'll try and have a look at some of these uh, oyster catches and not that we've got in front of us. So I'll just give you a pan around while Rachel sets up, just to show you a bit more of the, the pits, as we refer to them. So these pits were actually quarried out during the war for gravel to create roads, uh, and it's uh, then got flooded and has now created this incredible landscape for the wildlife. So we've got these little islands are brilliant for um, breeding common terns. Population Sorry. Um, so yeah, so our turn population is 180 pairs this year, um, and that's actually one of our largest um, year for breeding common turns on this site. So it looks like Rachel's focusing on some of the oyster catches out on the wash. Uh, and there you go, I've got uh, one of the juveniles. Yeah, there. sorry, Andy. it's so windy out here. So yeah, I think Rachel might struggle with the sound because it is blowing an absolute gale out here on the wash at the moment. Uh, and it's blowing straight from a westerly direction, which just puts us in a wind tunnel. Um, so I'm standing in one of the hides. So yeah, so looks like, um, so this is one of the images that was taken um, yeah, a number yeah. of years ago. And this just shows you like the real uh, sort of energy and mayhem that can occur when the birds start coming in off the, off the mudflats. So yeah, so Rachel's just showing you the landscape of the mudflats. Um, so you can yeah, see at the moment. So it's getting quite. Sorry, Lizzie. It's just saying it's getting quite busy. This is uh, a quite a popular event for people on the. Oh. Job. It's usually a really good turnout. A really popular. You can see people all the way down the coast. So if you haven't been here before, I really can recommend it. We came down yesterday morning and it was spectacular. So hopefully these birds are going to perform for us today as well. Yeah, so one thing to note as well is because we've got this really strong westerly wind, although we're on the biggest series of tides uh, for August, uh, with a strong westerly wind, it actually slows the, the water coming in. Um, and so the tide doesn't come in as quickly. Um, whereas if it was blowing from uh, an easterly or northerly direction, then the wind really pushes the water in um, and comes in a lot quicker. So we may see a slightly less big tide today um, just because of the strength of the wind. So let's move away from the common turns and get you back on some waders. Here we go, back on the waders. It's looking like some of these uh, birds are starting to move. move. The tide's so getting pushed out. It's really coming in fast now. You can see it zooming up the channels. I would love to put my scope on this, but every time I drop down to put my phone on the scope, I lose signal. So. I'm going to stick with the handheld. But it gives a great... Um, noisy turns down to the side as well. 
and some swallows swooping past every now and again. Oh, brilliant. They'll be on their migration south. It's nice to see those. We've had a couple of swifts over here this morning as well, so a few late ones leaving there. So it looks like we've got a question coming in from Bird, Virtual Bird Fair about what time of year would you recommend visiting Snettersham? Uh, so actually, the beauty of Snettersham is that it's pretty good all year round. Um, so if you want to see the wader spectacle, um, you need the big high tides from July all the way through to uh, December and into February time. And then during April and May, the wader numbers drop off as they've gone back to their breeding grounds up in Siberia. Um, and Scandinavia. Um, the winter we get um, 100,000 pink-footed geese uh, that roost on here so the winter is absolutely incredible at dawn um, and then during May and June is all about um, breeding avocets, common terns as well. So but the highlight is definitely from the high tides uh, in the autumn. So we've got another question coming in. Uh, so when do the pink-footed geese normally arrive in autumn? So they should be arriving towards the end of September. Uh, numbers peak in uh, December time. Um, but yeah, so from September, October, November, December uh, and into January, we'll start seeing the pink-footed geese arrive. got another question so can you see large flocks mid-october so yep actually so when it comes to waders um although rachel said that we had forty thousand counted yesterday um we will see continue to see actually the biggest flocks of waders will be october october time so the numbers are just going to keep on rising So here we go, there's a few more coming in. A bit more movement going on out here. So I, you probably won't be able to hear it very well, but as the tide comes in, the waders start calling really loudly to one another and the noise starts really building and always anticipation and excitement that something is going to happen. So yeah, we were talking about the, the count. So yesterday we did um, what we call a web count. So this is um, completed once a month across the UK. Uh, and it's a coordinated uh, count of all the wetland birds, of non-breeding wetland birds. So we had 40,000 uh, red knot. Um, and we had about 6,000 oyster catchers, 10,000 dunlin. Um, so it looks like Rachel's now got some uh, oyster catchers on the mudflats. Yeah, we've got some great movements on the go here. Mainly oyster catchers are visiting right now. So what what is really sad. So you should be able to notice as the tide comes in, you'll just be able to watch these oyster catchers are almost running on the mud. Uh, they're almost trying to outrun the, the incoming tide uh, and they'll only fly when they really, really have to and have probably run out of water to stand on. So you can see them bustling on in against the water. So oyster catcher numbers have remained fairly stable uh, in terms of their sort of migratory numbers coming through the wash over the past five years or so. Um, 
Uh, so we also have about 20 pairs that, that breed here as well on the shingle beach. You can just see the uh, the tide coming in now, the foam and the birds is trying to run away from it. So what we also find with these uh, birds is there's a, a local, uh, the Wash Wader Ringing Group, which has been going for a number of years. Um, and they've been ringing a lot of these birds and there's a lot of them have got different uh, colour rings and flags on. Um, and what we're actually discovering is that these birds are incredibly um, site faithful. Uh, they return to these sites every year on their migratory journey, which just shows how important these um, estuaries, mudflats and protected areas are. Uh, and generally we find if these habitats uh, disappear, uh, these birds actually don't know where to go, which is why it's crucial that we um, sort of protect some of these habitats from development. No me dice si tengo bien o no. ¿Cómo dice? Oh, hi, Anina. Oh, hi. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Lizzie. Nice view of those waders. Yeah, they're great, aren't you? I think you've got some uh, yeah. birds for us to show as well. Yeah, there's a few black winged seals, little egrets, gray herons. Um, unbelievable. It was raining pretty hard just a few minutes ago, something that didn't happen for two months here in Valencia. So most of the birds have shelter. Um, but uh, I'm pretty confident some of the good ones will come out uh, very soon. But I'm impressed about that area, okay? It's thousands of red knots. Uh, that's completely stunning. Here in Valencia, we are also in migration, uh, but we have a mix of birds. We have also residents and some breeding still around. So hopefully we'll get there along the morning, okay? It's very nice seeing what you are showing, guys. Mm, we are in Valencia. This is the eastern coast of Spain. And this is a small wetland located in just only 25 minutes from the city, from the city of Valencia. Uh, this is a special protection area for birds. It was declared in 1996. Uh, and that's what you were saying, you know, the importance of conservation, uh, habitat conservation is crucial for all these migrant birds. Uh, so we we are really looking forward to find some of the target species. Okay, I'm going to try to search for something else. So it looks like uh, some of the birds I might be just, coming uh, in for wash. Yeah, they're just starting to fly. We're getting groups now coming over. There's a few small groups just coming in now. Hopefully you guys see these. But it is so windy here today. I think the birds are just trying desperately to stay on the mud flats as long as possible. See some groups coming off the oyster catch is flying over. I'm just going to hand back there's a big group. They were slowly running out of the mud. So one thing we also noticed yesterday was um, in the wind that a lot of the knots 
were actually just hanging in the wind and were almost just like glistening in this light. So it'll be interesting to see if they do the same thing today as they did yesterday. Yeah, the wind's coming at a slightly different angle today. I'm going to pan around. You can see a few birds coming over behind me. That's just in the wrong direction here. Oh, we've got lots of knots in the air now. They're just starting to create a bit of a murmuration. You can see them just in front of the wind turbines, right on the horizon. Almost like it's a mucky line on my screen. I've got some coming over. There we go. Whoa. They're just starting to stream in now. More coming off. It's incredible the noise of the oyster catches at high pitch. I don't know if it's coming through on the microphone. Also, you've got a rather excited dog close by, so <laughs> might be catching that too. Oh, there's just waves of them coming now. A lot more space out today. Oh. Hoping this is coming across. They're going straight over our heads, right into these vast gravel pits behind. Oh, the flashes of white from the oyster catches with just streams of knots. So many. And more on the horizon as well. I'm just going to turn around. Hopefully, it's a wet. Not sure if you see the sun's really bright, but it's just crowding over us, streaming around. Whoa! Just flashes in the sky. Excuse I don't know where I put my camera. Just hanging in the sky now above me. See the flashes of the white, it's just making the sky sparkle. It's just this amazing light show. More streams coming off now, and they're really getting pushed up. The tide's really high, it's just about touching the marshes. So the knots coming in, the more just streaming overhead. coming through wave after wave. Hopefully you can see through the sunshine. Oh, wow. <laughs> just incredible. You know, I'm sure if you can see down there just Lines of people just taking it all in. There's still quite a lot behind me. Okay, sorry. There's still quite a lot of birds, actually. I can see oyster catchers clinging on to that last bit of mud. Trying desperately to keep feeding on the mud flat. And try and get up high over here. See what we can see. Over the gravel pits. Streaming down there. The wind is just funneling over these gravel pits. I'm going to try and turn around. Not sure if you can see there's a hide down there. That's where Lizzie is based at the moment. She's in one of the hides down at the bottom. And she must be having fantastic views. Wow, it's just 
swirling around. <laughs> All these people going to enjoy the show. Okay, I think we lost signal. And here we are in Valencia again. This is a white headed duck female or juvenile, probably. Uh, the light is quite poor. I'm very lucky of having this ATX 95 because with this rain, I don't know if you can really tell that the, it's raining. Uh, I hope she will move so you can have a good profile of this beautiful duck. This is one of the most endangered ducks in Europe. Um, they have been, uh, this year, we had six pair nesting in this uh, wetland, in this reserve area. Uh, but it's one of the most uh, endangered ducks uh, we do have here in Europe a part of marble teal. Uh, both species are present here in this wetland and both uh, have been nesting. Um, this one uh, during the 70s almost was disappeared completely. Only a few individuals, around 22 individuals were detected during the 70s. Uh, but after good management uh, from the government, Brady duck, that the American duck um, and the protection of this European species and also the release of some of the individuals. The population now it's uh, it's stable. It's uh, going. It's not excellent at all. It's around two thousand birds uh, going up and down. Uh, but here in Spain in Valencia region, um, also in La Mancha, Albacete and, and Andalusia is, is present and we are lucky to enjoy it today <laughs> under the rain. Hi Goodroom! Hi! What, what's going My on there? <laughs> <laughs> Not much right now because it's really windy. I'm here in Austria on a mountain peak called the Hochwechsel. It's south of Vienna. And I was sent out from Swarovski to find the Eurasian Dotterel because usually this is a really good spot to see Dotterels in this time of the year. They are not breeding here. Actually, there are few spots in Austria where they are breeding, but usually they are breeding in uh, up north in Europe. And I will show you how it looks here. Okay. Just a second. Mm. And we went out today to find some, but right now oh. there are just cows. But um, lovely landscape. Nice yes, area. very lovely. You can see uh, that Dotterel really loves spots like this and very short grass and a lot of rocks and here you can see and it's really windy so usually i would see here a lot of um here the cows again <laughs> i like them <laughs> uh <laughs> usually you could see uh ah, here you oh, can nice. see the dotterel i have digiscope this pick exactly and this spot i'm standing right now uh, mm -hmm. The day I found this dotterel, it was uh, um, we were sleeping up here in the car, a uh, uh, few uh, about a kilometer back, um, and we went up in the morning. And in the fog, we found this bird, and that was really great. And yeah, usually now the peak would be of the migration of the adult dotterels, and about two weeks later, a lot of uh, young dotterels could be found. If you're lucky, they are resting on mountain peaks like here or um, in the lowlands, uh, in grassland or on already harvested fields in the flatland. You can see them to 
So right now is really a good time here in Austria to find them. And the Dotterelle is also really good to, to digiscope because um, hi, just cows here now, because um, it is not shy at all. So back to me, so you can see anything. Okay. Okay. Here. Um, <laughs> it is. It is not shy at all. It's also the name Dotterel means. It's like a, a, it's a slow or, yeah. Person, okay. I think I, I've read this. So because these birds are really tame and easily uh, to see and they are not shy at all. So yeah, but today no daughter okay. and no little birds too. <laughs> and how many of them do you regularly have on migration around your area? Oh, Lisi is there. With, uh, it's a very good place to be, Lisi. Amazing, overwhelming, those red knots. My God, that's great. Okay, um, this is a black wing stilt. That it's, uh, it's a resident species. We have good numbers of them nesting and, and all over the year. Also some common terns as well, and sandwich terns still around. Um, this is a, generally it's also a good tern colony, except this year, uh, because we did have a very rainy spring season, which means that the water levels were too high and there was no room for the terns colony. So we had around 100 pair less than usually we do in this reserve. Also, uh, a few years ago and last year as well, elegant tern, it's an American species, was nesting in this same colony. So that's a black wing stilt just feeding and come under the rain a little rib show up as well many little grips are on the move and we have big flocks of them this is a brackish water lagoon beside the sea which gives a, a good diversity of birds holds quite nice species. This was restored by the local government. It used to be a rice party. Um, and thanks for a conservation action, it became again a wetland area. And now it's one of our main hotspots near Valencia. I'm going to try to search for a few more white-headed ducks that probably will be hidden around, hidden behind the vegetation. So it looks like all the knot have now come off the mud flat and are now piling in onto the pits. So it's incredible watching them all sort of hustle and bustle together and run around the place. So you can just see they're all starting to molt out of their breeding plumage, which is traditionally like brick red breast. Uh, into their grey, more subtle winter plumage. And you might not be able to pick it up, but the sound is incredible of them all chattering to one another.
So they tend to do this little bit of running around with each other. I think all just trying to find space on the the available shingle. So what's really interesting is they won't nest, they won't roost, sorry, on our um, roost bank just yet. Um, because it's too vegetated for them. But it's a an amazing sight and it's on it should be on everyone's bucket list. Hi Mark. Welcome to the Dutch island of uh, Tessel oh, in the in the Netherlands. It's very windy here, so hopefully you can hear me. I'm uh, at one of the, the freshwater scrapes, which is just behind uh, the dike, which is behind me, which I'll show you in a little bit, where the wooden sea is. It's high water at the moment, so um, birds have been pushed over. Uh, because there's not much um, sort of salt marsh here, the, the wooden sea goes directly onto, onto the dike, which is in a lot of places in the Netherlands. Then birds are forced over the dike onto these freshwater pools, a bit like you're seeing also in Snettisham. Now, unfortunately, because of the, the strong winds, Lizzie was also saying that that, that makes in Norfolk, uh, the, the tide will be lower. Now, I'm a few hundred kilometers on the other side of the North Sea from, from Lizzie, and the wind is pushed over to our side. So the tides are really high at the moment. So birds are actually, they spread all across the the fields and a number of wader scrapes. So at the moment, we haven't got the huge concentrations. But what I have got in front of me is uh, a few rough, rough, uh, really a, a migrant bird through the Netherlands. Uh, there's really only a, about 20 breeding pairs here in the country, and numbers have really declined. But it's this time of year that numbers start coming through the Wadden Sea, and these freshwater pools are perfect for them. Now, unfortunately, well, unfortunately for you, but it was spectac spectacular for me. There was a peregrine came through about 20 minutes ago. So a lot of the birds lifted up and they've moved on perhaps to another pool a bit further up. But um, the ones that have stayed are the ones that are obviously wanting to actively feed. So they're the ones that are a bit more active. I, I've actually got two now that have just stopped feeding and they're having a quick clean. The sun's just come out. It, it stayed dry, luckily. But as I said, it, 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 it's quite windy. Also on this pool this morning, there's been curly sandpipe, uh, ringed plovers. There's a few snipe, which I was also trying to get in the scope. Uh, but they've really cut down, bit out of view, thanks to, thanks to the winds. Um, as I say, these, these pools, are trying, to, if I can, show you a bit of where I am. Because Tesla is really a real hot spot for... For birds, it makes it very at attractive for bird watching. So, if I just try and show you where I am, you'll see the sun shining. I was shouting behind my car because of the wind. This is the, the scrape behind me. Apologies for the uh, the wobbling. So, this is the way the scrape behind me, and as I mentioned, the wooden sea dike is here, and. The, the wooden sea is directly behind here. So, as I said, the birds don't really have anywhere to shelter. So, all along the coast here, Tessel's about 25 kilometers uh, north to south. So, all along the, the coast here are um, a number of these, probably about 10 or so of these scrapes that have been made by um, conservation organizations, and they're perfect for birding. You, you saw that my car was right here. Um, so you can drive right up, back to and film, and days like this when you might have to shelter from, from, from rain or wind, it, it's ideal birding. And as I say, then um, you get quite close to birds if you tag it with the high tide. We're looking across the islands, uh, the island's quite uh, flat, and uh, about 8 kilometres east to west, I'm looking now west, is the North Sea. And all along the North Sea coast is the dunes of Tessel. That's a big national park, 30 kilometers long as it bends around the islands. And that's really a great place for, uh, to, go, to go birding. There's 
Uh, spoonbill breed there. There's around 500, 600 pairs of spoonbill on the islands. And most of them are actually in the dunes at a few sort of uh, freshwater areas in the dunes. Scarce breeding birds include nightjar, woodcock, um, hen harrier, and short-eared owl. So it's really a good place where there's a, a lot of mix between waders and uh, other, other species. We're getting right into the migration time now. I'm just going to see what else I can get in, get in the scope. I've got a few more rough here. That's really the birds that have stayed around are the, are the rough. Um, now, did I mention Dotterill? The Tessa is one of actually the best places in the Netherlands for Dotterill. They come here uh, during their migration and then they roost on, on the fields, on the farmlands. And if you're lucky, you might, uh, with a bit of looking through, through the scope, you might be able to uh, pick up Dotterill. Here's a, a rough. They've lost all their, their spectacular summer plumage, but occasionally you can get, you see a bit of variation in the plumages still. Hi, yeah, I've got a bird, a young northern wheat ear. You have got lots of them up here. And usually now when it's the migration season, you have lots of small birds up here at the hook wexel, like black red studs or wheat ears or pipits, like water pipits, for example. And usually here is also a big flock of northern ravens, but not today because Yes, I guess they don't like the wind at all. But now we have moved to a place where uh, it's a bit more sheltered. So I've, I've the chance to, to digiscope this young northern wheat here for you. And yes, it is really great this time of the year to come up here also for watching raptors like honey buzzards who are migrating south. That's great. So the wheat, the wheat ears are also breeding there. Uh, they're also breeding on, on Tessel. There's a lot of rabbits in the, in the dunes here. And uh, wheat ear uh, is one of the best areas for breeding wheat ear. Now I've got a bar-tailed godwit here in, in view. It's, it's again, it's a bird that actually comes in, in huge numbers in the Wadden Sea. Um, but they mainly, mainly stay on the outside, on, on the few salt marshes that there are here. Um, but this, this bird with the wind, I think it's, it's come over, it, it was on his own, and he was roosting a, roosting a lot this morning, keeping out the wind. There's also uh, a turnstone just in front. Again, these are birds that quite often use the, use the dike. They feed on, uh, as the water's coming up, they can feed between the rocks of the dike. But again, they're quite often found on these freshwater, freshwater pools here. Hello, everyone. I see Alexander. Hello. <laughs> how, how, how are you? How is it with you? How's the weather? Well, you got a little bit better weather than I do. Well, look at this. So no, no <laughs> better play, no migration. Yeah, well, it's, it was pouring heavily all night, all morning and all afternoon this, today. And I just had a little bit of migration this morning. But it's, it's really heavily raining at the moment. I, I'm, I'm very pity I cannot show you this incredible mi mi migration, what is usually Batumi famous for. Even with that new amazing binocular that Rachel has, an L Pure, it will be quite difficult today. But anyway, maybe I will have a little chance to tell you verbally and about Batumi that some people who have less knowledge about our, our location, get more information about this. Well, we are right now in Batumi. It's in Georgia, Eastern Black Sea Coast, the Caucasus region. Uh, this place is quite famous for the raptor migration. I would say one of the world's uh, biggest raptor migration place. And at the moment, the, it's a period it's a beginning of the, the migration period and birds 
from Western Europe, and, uh, from Eastern Europe and West Siberia are migrating towards Africa and they are passing through this place called Batumi bottleneck. But not right now, probably they are hiding somewhere in the trees like I do in the shelter up at the Raptor watch point. Nothing else is really possible today. Uh, well, on their migration, raptors usually pass through Batumi. This very narrow bottleneck, which is no wider than only uh, 10 kilometers. And here we use basically um, two raptor watch points. One is right now where I'm based, and another one is four kilometers away to the shore, towards the shore. So these are the two watch points from where we normally watch and count raptors. We, when we say we, these are people, not actually the, the bird watchers and, and counters. Unfortunately, this year, none of them, none of them are here because of the pandemic. Uh, but hi, Rachel. Hi, Dan. You can't guarantee what's going to appear when. Well, Pete, I'm a bit disappointed. I, I, I wasn't able to show you some, show you the the things. But Tom is popular for. But this this morning, while I came up here to the station, I was I was I was able to photograph uh, a, a morning migrating honey buzzer and this maybe i can show you this one uh, honey buzzer is great yeah <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> it's <not black. laughs> but there is a little bit of migration here certainly had a fair few pastorines coming down the coast so i'm not just having a wag tail and, and uh, a few things i've had a bit of stuff like that to head south, as Rachel said earlier, switch and swap as well. There's certainly things happening here, um, and there's been a bit of a sudden change overnight in the, in the wind direction as well, which has caused a change in the behaviour of the waders. Yesterday they were hanging above them. Amazing. The They've actually just dropped straight in in front of Lizzie, where she is in the high, um, and from where we've located to now, we can actually see them looking out uh, from, from our viewpoint, and they're all boosting up on the high. Good, very good. Well, <laughs> so, well yeah. Yeah, yesterday was a little bit better here. Um, well, actually, yesterday I was on the other count station and it was a little bit better there. The, the weather wasn't really perfect. It was going to rain soon, was cloudy, foggy. But today is, is really like thunderstorm, fog, all morning, nothing visible. Well, but but, so uh, let me tell you more about the, 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 the my, maybe I will tell you more about the migration so you and the other people can can know more. Normally, through this bottleneck every autumn, over a million birds pass. And, and quite of a diversity here, up to 35 different species can be seen. Right now, in the beginning of uh, the migration season, that basically honey buzzard streams where you can see some of the uh, areas. Actually, Batumi is quite a significant, uh, quite, quite a noteworthy place for the uh, area migration because I don't think there is any other place where harriers migrate in such a concentration. Here you can see pallet harrier, uh, hen harrier, montagues harrier, um, so, and marsh area, of course, and in really, really uh, high concentration, especially in the beginning of the migration season and first, uh, first part of September. Later on, in, uh, when the September comes, there will be more species coming in, like step buzzards, black kites, booted and short-toed eagles, <clears throat> and the migration will be actually peaking sometime in the mid of September. Later on, there will be more eagles joining the, the, the flocks. It will be lesser spotted and greater spotted eagles, imperial eagles, eastern imperial eagles, so, 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 
uh, some, some other raptors as well. And yeah, normally here on a good days, on a good times, not during pandemic, but normally on a good times here, there are many people actually. There are quite many bird watchers from all over the world. It's also in a, it's not because of the weather, but because of the pandemic, there no one else except us. And there is unfortunately no counts happening this year. But Umi Raptor count had to cancel the, 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 the autumn counts this year because of the pandemics. Well, I can go very far about the numbers and species in Batumi, but this is really, really incredible place and proven by, 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 by many facts, by many people, by, 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 by several circumstances. So what I would also recommend you in, in case you are interested to know more about the numbers. So that Batumi sounds absolutely incredible. Alex, but we're going back on the knot at Snettersham, which are showing incredibly well. Um, and I think we're going to go back to Rachel in a minute because um, she's been lucky enough to have the new uh, Swarovski NL binoculars. So they must have been uh, pretty. Uh, how did you get on with them uh, during this spectacle? Oh, she's still muted. Sorry. <laughs> Technical error. Um, yeah, the, the fjords are, are really good um, for something like this. You, you've got the vast mud flats in front of us, which is now completely covered in water. Um, but you've got that extra 10% field of view with these um, over the EL. So, of course, you're on to a winner right there. For me personally, the, the standout thing is the shape of them. You don't. You don't really get to see things that look like this. They're just comfy, and it just makes the whole experience so much more enjoyable. It's one less thing to worry about. Yeah, fantastic. Definitely recommend them. <laughs> They frazzle your brain when you when you're watching a whole flock of ten thousand knots through them. You get an extra thousand knots per hundred meters or whatever you want to call them at. So it's even more spectacular than through your standard EL. So yeah, it's pretty incredible. Um, I was really surprised uh, by just the sheer um, the depth of the field and um, the width, the field of view as well. Um, absolutely incredible. Yeah, you look pretty excited to have them in your hands. And I think there's a lot of jealous people around right now. Yeah, it's quite amazing that the amount of people that we've seen are like, oh, oh can we try them? Can we try them? Like, oh, get the hand sanitizer out. <laughs> it looks like you're having a pretty good time in a the hide there, though, Lizzie. I think uh, uh, yeah, something like the viewers would be fantastic just for watching things that are not wow. so close up and in such huge quantities. That's amazing view from there, yeah. from that. So they are pretty close. They're probably, what, 20 metres in front of me, 30 metres in front of me. Wow. Um, so the views. But I think we're going to nip across to, to Johan in uh, Extremadura. Brilliant. Hi, everyone. Hi, Can you hear me? Hi. So I'm actually at the, one of the, the best places probably to see vultures and raptors in general. I'm currently in the Monfragua National Park. This is Extremadura, Spain. Uh, actually, we choose this place because normally the background that you see behind me is the Salto de Gitano, and this is crowded by vultures. Hundreds of griffon vultures mostly are flying around, but not today. Probably this is the only day in the year when there is no vultures flying in the sky. I, I had opportunity to actually see a few. I saw uh, two Egyptian vultures this morning when I arrived. One Cinerius vultures, Imperial Eagle was flying, was flying uh, near me just now. And there are several griffon vultures on the rock. Not several, quite a few griffon vultures uh, at, the, at the rock still haven't started flying. Uh, I don't know if you can see the other camera. Probably you can. We are trying to adjust the, the camera to the, to the Swarovski scope so that uh, at least you can see a few griffon vultures there. But I am expecting very soon that, uh, that uh, at particularly the griffons will start flying and, and we will have a better images. In a, in a few minutes of time. The weather is really hot here. 
So do I have a few more minutes just to explain why this place is important, actually? No. <laughs> Hi, Job. Hello. How are you? Nice Great. memories. It brings me that landscape. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's amazing place. I think that the the, the cameras cannot capture the, the the magnificent magnificent view that I have behind me. I'm actually at the Castillo de Monfragüe, yeah. which is just near the Salto de Gitano, which is one of the places that everybody that comes to Extremadura actually visits. Yeah, it's an amazing area. And um, it's actually what about what about yeah. black storks? Have uh, nested? Like, Yes, have nested and we are a bit late because they left the nest. Yeah, they have yeah. gone. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Good. But anyway, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit disappointed because I was expecting that we will be able to see more things here because only Monfragüe have over 300 breeding pairs of Cinereus vultures, nearly 700 breeding pairs of of uh, of uh, Griffon vultures. So. Uh, quite a, a few pairs of imperial eagles so normally this is really crowded by raptors particularly by 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 vultures but let's see i think that we have a few more minutes let's see if there is something that uh, will surprise us of course yeah this is um live action it's what it is yes yeah, so yeah 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 this is what it makes it fun and and exciting and challenging as well so Birding. It is, yes, yeah. We, we need to have, have a day. Exactly. So I'm I'm moving the scope slowly. Okay. There you go. That's another white headed duck. Resting. Napping. But you can really see the stripe on the cheek. Yeah, that's it. That's better picture. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Yeah, during this time, the females join youngs and and stay around. Males can you see this Griffo? Okay. Let's go for the griffon. Yes, I I just had a, a griffon vultures passing quite nearby, above okay. me. Okay. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. No, no, no sorries. I love griffons. We we also have griffons in Valencia, but uh, yeah. an hour from here, and not the big numbers as you do have there. Okay. It's amazing, it's actually. To And the sheep have moved already from your place. The sheep yes. vultures. I, I actually I actually saw them, but I, I really have no facilities to to actually show you. I saw the the two adult Egyptian vulture passing just a few minutes ago. Again okay, now. Okay, good. With the binoculars. Okay. And what time did they move? away around half of september 10 of september oh when do they leave the, yeah. yeah the the, migra the migration is actually it's supposed to to start the, the the higher frequency is probably end of august in beginning of september okay good yeah yeah the ones that are nesting in valencia region moves around the, the 10 the 15 of september every year yeah, now it's uh, probably in a few weeks' time, it will be a great place to see them in the Gibraltar, how they're passing the, oh, yeah. the, the Gibraltar. That's an, yeah. that's but an I can, place. I can actually mm -hmm. tell you a secret, uh, <laughs> just between us. Actually, particularly in Extremadura, there is a wintering population of over 100 birds that actually are spending the winter here. Yeah. That's, that's really amazing, because uh, just to explain I to people that secret. are not familiar, 
Yeah. I will keep it, okay? I, will, okay, I promise. Okay. I promise okay. I'll keep it. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, this is um, one of the beauties that have been breeding this year. Six pairs nesting and succeeding in this small wetland. So we hope next year we'll have many more of them around. And well, I don't know if time, but I will. I want to thank everyone to join us today. Uh, all of you, of course, have made an amazing stream live with all these conditions, tough conditions, weather, rain, uh, internet connection. So birds are worth it, okay? I think the female have moved and I wanted to Okay, so Okay, I don't know now if you can see me. I wanted to thank all of you to join us today. Uh, um, I think we had a lot of fun. It was uh, a bit difficult with all these natural situations, and uh, but I think we we enjoyed everything. Um, hope to see you on Wednesday, twenty sixth of August, uh, for the next birding live on location from the USA. And please uh, uh, stay safe. Never stop birding. Enjoy your day and see you next time. Okay. Bye, everyone. <laughs>